Don't move. You can't see us if we don't move. If you sit still, it's not going to see you. Complete joke. Supposedly it becomes down to the T-Rex's brain shape is similar to that of frogs and frogs can only see movement. Frogs can't only see movement, otherwise they wouldn't be able to function. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Hone. I'm a paleontologist at Queen Mary University of London. I'm an expert on dinosaur behavior and ecology. Today we're going to be looking at some dinosaur and pterosaur clips from movies and TV and judge how real they are. Put 12 ants in these animals, they're never gonna trust me again. He's giving them supposedly the stop signal, but they're still coming for him. If you tell a dog to stop, it should stop pretty much instantly. If it keeps coming and it keeps growling, it's not responding to that signal. So Velociraptor's tiny. It would be waist high to him standing up. So these are grossly exaggerated in terms of their size. We now know they're fully feathered. They would be as feathered as modern birds. These things should be totally covered in feathers. Their heads are really big and blocky. Velociraptor's got a really long, narrow, skull so I think kind of you know doberman shaped head which these really don't have back up the noises are a bit mixed they're using various different things so i think there's geese in there and some alligator hisses they didn't have super complicated voice boxes like modern birds do so they're probably not making really complicated trills and whistles and things like that crocodiles are the nearest living relatives to dinosaurs apart from birds which really are dinosaurs and they have actually quite a range of calls and growls and there's no reason to think they wouldn't sound something like that they're much heavier than you they're much stronger than you they're much faster than you they can jump far higher than you can they don't seem to be able to climb oddly when we think they in reality they probably could by climbing up a tree that's probably quite a good strategy if you can get up the tree fast enough before they can get to you they're basically just going up and down. Like those really old movies of people trying to build aeroplanes in like 1910 and the wings just flap up and down and the whole machine just bobbles and then falls apart. And if you do that, you push air down to go up and then you immediately push air up and go down and all you'll do is bob around on space. That's how they're trying to fly. You need to fold the wing for the upstroke and then open it up for the downstroke. <laughs> She just grabbed someone and picked them up. Pterosaur's feet are built just like ours. They have a really big, long, flat bit of the main part of the foot and then some very small toes at the edge. And yeah, if you've tried picking a pen up with your toes, it's really quite hard. And this is a, you know, trope from dinosaur films. There's nothing to grip with. Your next problem is a pteranodon of about that size weighs 30, 40 kilos and it's lifting up a human who's 60, 70. So you wouldn't be able to grab anyone. This bit's nice. We don't know if pterosaurs could dive. It's certainly possible that they could. Pelicans are famous for doing this sort of thing. It's really motoring. Like, like penguins don't move that quick underwater. <laughs> the Mosasaur model's really nice. It's way too big, like it's about double the size that it should be. I mean, certainly 10, 12 meters, this thing's like 20 plus. But one thing you can just see there, which is really nice, is the palatal teeth. They don't just have teeth around the edge of the mouth, they actually have more teeth fixed into the roof of the mouth, and you can see them there. They'd eat pterosaurs, they'd eat fish, they'd eat sharks, they'd eat other marine reptiles, they'd eat turtles, all of this kind of stuff. For the dinosaurs, about a five. The mosasaurs, like an, seriously, like an eight or a nine, apart from just being way too big. One herd had only a single baby. That's about the right shape for a dinosaur egg. They're not classically hen shaped with a really big bulge. They're actually more elongated and oval, so they got that right. Their last hope for the future. That's a slight worry already where they say they had one baby and that's their hope for the future. I don't know how you're gonna keep a herd going with one. We have dinosaur nests with adults on them and embryos in the eggs that match the adults on the nest. 40, 50 eggs is pretty normal. I don't think we have any sauropod embryos, so we don't have any like immediately post hatching animals. It would have a bit of a longer neck and a bit of a longer tail than this, but it is really nice that it's not just an adult made smaller. All the babies don't just look like the adults. They look like juvenile versions. They've got those classic baby things, which is not just true of humans and things like puppies. Relatively big eyes in a relatively big head and relatively big feet. This is really, really normal. When we find eggs, they're often broken like this in the end, they shatter into lots and lots of little pieces. Until recently, we only had dinosaur eggs that were relatively hard and bird-like, and we've now started finding some that were more reptile-like, which probably explains why we hadn't found them before, because they're rather more fragile and so don't preserve very well. He knew them by sight, by scent, and by their love. He knew they would be together always. We do have herds of sauropods 
it's perfectly reasonable that juveniles would hang around the whole time, but we also don't know. We see a cohort separation in others. So in other words, the babies all hatch, they grow to a certain size, and then they'll go off on their own. Dinosaurs are part of a group called archosaurs, which includes modern birds, which are dinosaurs, and crocodiles. Basically, almost all of them exhibit what we call both pre- and post-hatching parental care. So yeah, they would recognize their parent, they would follow them around, and the parent would look after them. They're probably gonna separate off at some point, or at least in certain cases we see that. We find groups of dinosaurs all of one age, and then groups of another, of one species, and then another group, and then another group, and another group. Oh, like an eight. It's really good. <laughs> series they call this an Aceraptor, but as far as I know it's made up. It's really nice that the, the crest itself is brightly coloured. It's a display structure. That's the one bit that it's trying to show off with. That should be the colourful bit, not the rest of it. There are dinosaurs with attacking tails. You've got things like ankylosaurs with their armoured dinosaurs, their famous tail clubs, stegosaurs with their spikes on the end of the tail. So Stegurus, it would be doing some kind of cutting action rather than an impaling or crushing one, because it's got a big series of serrated cutting edges on the end of it. This super long thin whiplash tail, and it's been suggested that that would be very nasty if it hit something. I think the bones would shatter if it did. It's an impact, it's like being slapped with something. It's not cutting you because there's no edge there. It's a circular cross section of some muscle around bone. It's not gonna cut you in half. And so you're gonna run up to something and then stop and turn around and hit it with your tail. This is not a good way of catching something. And if it's running away, if you're trying to run after it and then stop and turn around and hit it with your tail, how would it ever evolve? Six, five, five. <laughs> oh, nice boy. Oh, nice boy. Nice this is tiny. The big animals, two and a half, plus meters tall to the top of the head. It'll be at the ceiling of the room we're in. Now the crests are really good. They come up and over in this arc, but you, you can't quite see it now, but there's also this little spike that extends off the rear. This is what you'd expect from an animal that hadn't encountered people before. This is an animal in a zoo with keepers. It has encountered people before. There's no reason to think that it had that whatsoever. It's got a big display feature on its head. Why has it got another one? This is copied off, uh, a uh, thing called the frilled lizard in Australia, which absolutely does have this big fan that it puffs out. This is it's uh, spitting what's supposed to be some kind of venom at him. I believe it's just supposed to be kind of toxic saliva. Um, there are lots of reptiles that have a pretty toxic saliva in addition to like specialized venom in the way that we see in snakes. But that, that looks like goo. <laughs> That's horrible stuff. It's not gonna kill you instantly. Toxins take time to work. You want to get it into the system. That's why you want to bite if you're venomous and it's not doing that. They apparently had to string a guitar string under the uh, dashboard of the car and they were plinking it and that's what makes the, the little ripples in the thing. Um, big animals obviously are heavy, um, but they don't tend to shake things very much. Elephants are famous for moving around very quietly. We walk in environments that are very hard that we have built. Rock doesn't tend to vibrate like that and soils of all different kinds give. So big animals don't leave earth shaking footstep. If the T-Rex was running down the road, yeah, I'd expect that, but it walking around still in its enclosure, it's not gonna be shaking the ground. It looks like a T-Rex gone wrong. It's a head shape, it's weird. It's kind of got a white of the eye, which of course animals don't usually have. And it looks like it's got three fingers, whereas if it's supposed to be a Tyrannosaur, or at least a T-Rex, it should only have two. Don't move. You can't see us if we don't move. If you sit still, it's not going to see you. Complete joke. Supposedly it becomes down to the T-Rex's brain shape is similar to that of frogs, and frogs can only see movement. Frogs can't only see movement, otherwise they wouldn't be able to function. What they're very good at is seeing things that move, which is a different thing entirely. Frogs can absolutely see things that don't move. T-Rex doesn't have the brain of a frog, and therefore if you combine those two, it almost certainly could see you. On top of that, T-Rex has arguably the biggest eyeball of any terrestrial animal of all time. The idea that it had poor eyesight is beyond a myth, it's the absolute opposite. It's arguably the best eyesight of any terrestrial animal of all time. <laughs> 
the bit where they wave the flare and throw it, I'm absolutely sure it would be very interested in that. And if it sees that flying over, it's going to be more interested in that than you standing still. But just holding the kids going, don't move, yeah, that gets you eaten. But it's not terrible. It's just a bit clunky. Traveling in a group like this, pretty much not unless something is driving it like a drought. And we absolutely have fossil beds where the evidence from the geology suggests that there have been a massive drought followed by a massive flood. And yet pretty much every dinosaur in the environment is preserved together because this was probably the last remaining bit of water that draws every animal in. Carnotaurus is part of this really weird group called Abelisaurus. You can see these tiny, tiny, tiny little mitteny hands. Uh, everyone jokes about T-Rex and its tiny hands. It's got nothing on the Abelisaurus. The little armor spikes down the side, maybe. Uh, sometimes you do get thick scales like that. Um, but the jaw shape is absolutely spot on. This is the absolute cliched behavior of every predator in every documentary and movie ever. Why attack someone when you can stop roar at them first to scare them off and then run after them. Lions don't sneak up behind buffalo, roar and then attack. <laughs> Facing them down, some animals do this. This is how elephants respond to lions, this is how buffalo respond to lions. It's certainly been hypothesized that a bunch of dinosaurs did this. You can see he's got these kind of spiky thumbs which have been suggested to be used to fight off predators. But as you can see, in this kind of situation, he might poke a couple of holes in him before his head gets ripped off. The idea that carnivores are aggressive and herbivores are passive is a joke. If you go to Africa, the thing that most people are worried about are things like elephants and buffalo. And Cape buffalo in particular are extraordinarily dangerous animals. Hippos are famously very dangerous. Herbivores are not just peaceful, gentle giants. So the situation is obviously a bit weird, but fundamentally the anatomy of the dinosaurs is great. This is a nine. If it's supposed to be a Giganotosaurus, someone's accidentally copied T-Rex and just given it three fingers. That doesn't make it Giganotosaurus. The head shape's completely wrong for that. They're very big and heavy, so they're not gonna be that fast. 10, 15 miles an hour, more than fast enough to outrun him. These were basically marathon runners. They're also never gonna be able to hide and ambush something over a short distance. They're gonna, you know, come over the horizon or come out the trees. The prey is gonna see them coming and bolt, and they're just gonna go and keep going and keep going and keep going. They had adaptations in their feet to basically retain energy with each step and make it, make themselves good for that. The proportions of the various bones down the leg make them good for taking lots of steps uh, with a long stride length. Whoa. They're not that quick at turning. I think your best bet would be to try and spiral. What I'd want to find is a really big tree or a really big rock formation and just go around that until they got bored and lost interest, but they might still be able to keep going longer than you can. <laughs> if it's supposed to be a Giganotosaurus about a two, if it was, if they'd say it's a T-Rex, I'd say actually it's quite good. <laughs> More like a seven or an eight. So here we've got Carnotaurus again. Big reptile-like scales that overlap, which is not what dinosaurs have. <laughs> Kind of classic floppy over hands, which now every dinosaur has to have because of course they copied it off Jurassic Park. And for the Velociraptors, they had human puppets with people in them. And our arms don't flex that way, but we can do this effectively. So at least part of the reason that the Velociraptor hands do that in Jurassic Park is because there's a human inside them controlling the arms. But then of course, absolutely everyone copies that. And so now all dinosaurs have this dreadful hand posture. I mean, that would probably have a decent effect. A taser is just putting lots of electricity through you and that messes up your nerves and stops you doing anything. And dinosaurs had nerves operating in the same way that ours do. Why these people are so hilariously under-equipped. Zoos carry elephant guns or rifles capable of tackling things like lions, or they have the police on notice nearby who can come out at very, very short notice. Yet another five, I think. This is their big kind of T-Rex equivalent taking on from the T-Rex that was in the original 1933 King Kong. What do they call it? Is it Vastatosaurus they call it or something like that? 
And if the movement's right, the feet move right, they, they come down, you get, the, you get the lift off and the, the toes come together and then spread again. Um, it's got the, uh, the slight leg swing, which is really nice. They always tend to make them run like this, and they want to be placing the feet in the midline so the legs should swing in with each step, and they, they kind of have that going here. There's not a lot of point chasing for a much smaller bit of food while you're carrying a giant bit of food in your mouth. For a fictional, hyper-evolved tyrannosaur, it's really nice. Yeah, I'd give it a nine. The Spinosaurus, it's not bad for the time. So this was, yeah, 2001. Spinosaurus is, was, a, was an extremely poorly known dinosaur. We had a bunch of fragmentary fossils, the best of which had been destroyed in World War II by an allied bombing raid. Some recent discoveries from Morocco have restored some of those gaps. We now know it, it probably wasn't quite as tall as this. It had rather short legs. It had a rather fin-like tail. The spine on the back probably looked somewhat like this, but it wasn't just this perfect kind of semi-circle. <laughs> Big carnivores do and will fight and kill each other. But again, it's a really terrible idea. You're facing an animal equally sized to you, equally well armed as you, and you don't know who's going to win. And it might be neither of you. Why would you bother to have this fight? Now that's probably fatal. T-Rex has like the biggest bite power of anything we've ever seen. Big teeth, they're about this wide, so an inch and a half wide, and maybe five, six inches long. We have big bones bitten through by adult T-Rexes. And it's just bitten through the base of the neck. So you've got your <laughs> trachea and your esophagus. So the windpipe has just been crushed by the lower jaw. Its esophagus has been severed, vagus nerve, and then the upper jaw's coming in through the top. That's almost certainly se severing the spinal cord. <laughs> Headbutt smash, that's been suggested for Tyrannosaurs. They do have these thick armor across the top of the head, certainly possible. And then that, like the Spinosaurus, just like snaps its neck. They don't have anything like the neck and jaw power for that. And T-Rex has an absolute bull neck because it's got such a big, heavy head. It has a really short, very muscular neck. If there's one dinosaur you probably can't do that to. It's, it's him. I've Refuse on principle to answer the question who would win in a fight between because I think it is the most trite, boring and uninteresting thing that one could possibly say about dinosaurs, even in fiction. But it's T-Rex. I'd actually give it an eight. I really quite like this bit. <laughs> Wonderful internal consistency because this is supposedly a mixture from Indominus Rex from the last film and a Velociraptor. Except Indominus Rex was a mixture of Velociraptor. So it's a mixture of Velociraptor and Velociraptor. Some organisms are surprisingly resilient to having their genes tinkered with. Most famously plants, all kinds of different plants hybridize rampantly with things that are so far evolutionary from them. The entertaining bit of the geneticists in the Jurassic World series is that they're simultaneously geniuses because they can produce animals like this that function whilst incompetent where they somehow manage to imbue them with incredible traits without having known about it. We accidentally gave it cuttlefish camouflage powers, but we didn't know. The first thing we should say is he's certainly done nothing or killed this. Dosing an animal with an anaesthetic is extremely difficult and you need to really know the physiology of the animal and you need to have, know how heavy it is. They're hooked inwards, which makes no sense at all. Animals have teeth that curve backwards so that when they bite on something they're hooking in and the animal can't pull out. But they're going this way. That's a big animal that's absolutely got the strength to lift someone up like that. Your bones and your ligaments and tendons are really quite strong. It's fairly hard to, to actually remove things like arms. You go into a cage with a big predator that you don't know if it's unconscious and start pulling in its mouth. Yeah, three. But yeah, we, Disney's dinosaur is really quite good. The one I always say is actually Jurassic Park 3 because it's got the most amount of dinosaurs in it and the fewest number of annoying children in it, which is a real bonus for a Jurassic Park film. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch more videos like this, please follow the links above.